share with people no matter what. And yeah, and YouTube has been instrumental in kind of taking it to that next level. But um, now more than ever, video online is just, it's exploded. So thankfully you have a lot of avenues as far as that's concerned. Now you graduated last year. Um, and then it was at that point that you basically dedicated yourself to the work that you're doing right now. Um, and now we've, we've got some time. The dust settled a little bit. You're obviously moving into the studio, so I have to imagine that's one big change. How, what are some other ways that your life is different now that you can kind of focus on this? Yeah. Yeah, so I was in, uh, I guess a big limiting part of when I'm going to school is I was also living in that city. So I was living in Hoboken, so I was in that apartment. So I didn't have a garage or anything like that. I'm just in this apartment, walking to class and back every day. So I've since moved out of there. So I have a place now with a garage so I can move between where I live and here, which is where I work. So that's like a pretty big change that I go to work instead of rolling out of bed and I'm at work. Um, And yeah, I, I get to spend a little more time on Ultimate and Ultimate related things. So that means practices and workouts and all the the mini and leagues and things like that that we're doing uh i get to coach a little bit i get to do clinics and then yeah i get to spend more time thinking about how to do video and i guess the dust is still kind of settling because i'm not fully in stride as far as like video content schedule like constant one after the other stuff but it's pretty close so i feel like in the next couple weeks it'll be fairly regular like back to the frequency it was before and it's going to be a lot easier to have different scenery and and just have it be better than it was before do you have like a target that you shoot for as far as like number of videos that you're putting out or is it just kind of like they happen when they happen when the content the time is ready yeah yeah they they're just kind of done when they're done and then they go live that's yeah. a, that's always why it seems to be at a weird hour when i'm uploading yeah you might have said like when i eat like all right here it is it's uploading it's like why are you uploading at 11 p.m it's like because well, i finished it at 10 45 so yeah. here it is um but yeah i guess i try to stick to I, I would like to upload at this point it's like two videos a week maybe three sometimes if it's a busy week there's a lot of technology you know it's quarter three quarter four there's a lot of stuff happening um, but it's like every couple of days, pretty much. Yeah. Um, and I should just throw this in there because, you know. The- There's two things that happen, I think. One is if you worked on radio, you, for some peculiar reason, you think you can do voiceovers. And that's not true. The other thing is you have an agent, which, you know, very few people in radio ever have. So you, you are in line. Welcome to Radio Survivor, the sound of strong communities. My name is Paul Reese Mandel. Hello, everybody. It's Eric Klein here on Radio Survivor, and we're talking about the possibility. Maybe you never dreamed that you you could build a tiny radio station totally legally in, yes. in your home or town. Very Coming up on This Week in Radio Tech, our guest is Chris Curran. He runs Podcast Engineering School and has some great advice for us. Whether you're a newbie to recording and podcasting and mixing, or you've been doing it for a while, you'll probably learn something. Plus, at the end of our show, we're giving away two of these uh, Echo Dots. So stick around. You're going to want to find out who won. This Week in Radio Tech is brought to you by Broadcast Supply Worldwide, where it's Christmas for the caster. Save up to 61%, whether you're a broadcaster, podcaster, voice caster, or everything caster, at BS. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This This is is Twit. Twit. Bandwidth for Triangulation is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Triangulation, episode 266 for Monday, September 26th, 2016. Marquez Brownlee. This episode of Triangulation is brought to you by Epson's new EcoTank printers. With Epson's line of SuperTank all-in-one printers, you can print thousands of documents without running out of ink. EcoTank is loaded and ready to print when you are. Visit epson.com slash EcoTank to find out more. 
Hello and welcome to Triangulation. I'm Jason Howell, obviously not Leo Laporte. Leo Laporte is still gallivanting around the world. Uh, This is the show where we talk with some of the most important people in technology. We just kind of sit them down one-on-one, ask them them all sorts of questions about their life, what brought them to where they are now, essentially, and why, uh, you know, why technology is just such a fun space to to be in and to live in. Uh, We're all here for a number of different reasons and we all have different paths. So this is a show uh, where we kind of dissect that a little bit and see how everybody ends up uh, where they are. This week, I don't know, I'm I'm super, super thrilled to uh, welcome Marquez Brownlee to Triangulation. I'm a huge fan of his work. Huge fan of your work, Marquez. Thanks for joining us today.